I have no doubt that everyone would agree this is a leaf, but so is this, and this, and even this crazy looking thing. All of these are examples of the basic plant organ known as a leaf, the place where most of a plant's photosynthesis takes place. But how are leaves that look so different from each other still fundamentally the same thing? Let's start with some basics about the types of leaves before we move on to what defines what is a leaf. There are two types of leaves, simple and compound. A simple leaf looks like what most people think of when you ask them to imagine a leaf. We'll use a black gum leaf as our example because, well, black gum leaves just look like a leaf. A simple leaf is made up of the leaf blade or lamina and the stem or petiole. The edge of the leaf is called the margin and there is a midrib that runs from the leaf base to the tip or apex. Coming off from the midrib are several leaf veins. As the name says, a simple leaf is pretty darn simple. If you love learning about botany and identifying the parts of the plants in your yard, get out your magnifying glass and go inspect that like button. Now we get to the compound leaves that are more complex and come in a couple of different varieties palmately compound leaves, which more or less look like a hand, and the pinnately compound leaves, which look more like a feather. Let's start with the palmately compound leaves, as they are the less complex of the two. For this explanation, we'll use a horse chestnut leaf. Yes, I know horse chestnut is not native to North America, but the best palmately compound leaf picks I could find were of horse chestnut leaves. Palmately compound leaves also have a stem or petiole, but instead of a single blade, it has two or more leaflets that all originate from the same location. The stems that connect the leaflets to the petiole are known as petioles, and the middle leaflet is called the central leaflet. The parts of each leaflet are like those of a simple leaf. The blade, the margin, a midrib that runs from the leaflet base to the tip or apex with the leaflet veins coming off of the midrib. Okay, are you still with me? Things are gonna get a little bit crazier as we move into pinnately compound leaves. These leaves can get big, up to several feet long on some plants, and have a distinctive feather shape. For our example, we'll use the leaf of a very common North American shrub, the staghorn sumac. Pinnately compound leaves also have a petiole, but it doesn't run the entire length of the leaf like it appears to. From where the first leaflets start to where the last leaflet is connected, it is called the rachis. If a leaflet emerges from the end of the rachis, it is called the terminal leaflet. Note that not all species with pinnately compound leaves will have a terminal leaflet. The leaflets are connected to the rachis with petioles, and the parts of the leaflets are the same as those of palmately compound leaves. The blade, margin, midrib, base, tip, and veins. Pinnately compound leaves of some species can have branches coming off the rachis on which the leaflets are attached. These are called bipinnately compound leaves. An example of a native tree with bipinnately compound leaves is the Kentucky coffee tree. But wait, there's more. Some species can have branches coming off the branches coming off the rachis and have what are known as tripinnately compound leaves. Devil's walking stick is a native shrub that often has huge tripinnately compound leaves. If you can identify a pinnately compound leaf, you should be able to figure out bi and tripinnately compound leaves with a little experience. If you are out in your neighborhood looking at plants and need a refresher on all this, most plant and tree field guides will have a set of diagrams showing the types of leaves. Need a good plant, shrub, or tree field guide? You can see all of our favorite field guides, other books, and equipment that we use here at Backyard Ecology on our recommendations page. I will put a link to it in the description. The question I'm sure a lot of you are thinking of is, great, I know what the types of leaves are and their parts, but how the heck do I know whether I'm looking at a leaf or a leaflet on a compound leaf? Excellent question. A leaf, whether simple or compound, will have an axillary bud at the base of the petiole where the leaf attaches to the stem. If we zoom in on a compound leaf and look at the base of a leaflet's petiole, we'll see that there is no bud. This is a very basic overview of leaves. There are a ton of other leaf characteristics you may run into while trying to ID a plant using a field guide, plant key, or even an app. Things like what type of margin a leaf has, or what type of hairs are on them, or the arrangement of the leaves on the stem, or how the leaflets are arranged on a compound leaf, and even the veination patterns. If you'd like to see more videos on basic botany concepts such as this, let me know down in the comments. 
I decided to make this video because of the comments I was receiving on a video I made a while back about how to tell poison ivy from the similar looking box elder. It was clear that there was a lot of confusion about what a leaf was and especially the concept of compound leaves. If you want to see why knowing about the types of leaves is important when IDing plants, you can check out that poison ivy box elder video right here and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.